I have a way you can communicate with angels and spirit guides using a digital voice recorder, something I shall cover in, in due time. I've been at it for about, um, been at it pretty much for about um, since 2010. So I've been at it for, for some time. And in later presentations, I will show you how you too can use any digital voice recorder or any recorder for that matter and be able to hear complete sentences back and forth and also be able to go and reverse the audio in order to be able to um, get the truth. Okay? Because angelic beings, uh, in my opinion, they're not all pristine and holy and divine as they might be. I have, if, if there's an angel, let's say, that is trying to conceal any form of information from you, you can actually discover their intent or the motion of intent. Because angels in general are not all divine, holy beings. Let me say this again. Angels in general are not holy and divine beings. Many angels are deceptive. And they've been lying to the world and lying to you people for a long, long time. They're the ones with the advent of all the major religions that have been given to you and bestowed upon you people. Angels have been responsible for Judaism, Christianity, Hinduism, Muhammad, uh, Muhammadim, um, how would you say it, um, the Muslim faith, Sikhism, and all other offshoots thereabout. And really, behind all this is this, this great you know, creator. But really, what we all have as people in the know, we have the ability and the inherent ability to create our own cosmos, our own world, our own life. So essentially, like you would have a cosmos, which would be different levels going, um, in my cosmos, it's about um, 24 layers. And uh, these are orbits around my own cosmos. And so to me, someone such as, uh, let's say, the creator of the universe is all but just a butterfly around, hovering around that cosmos. And in fact, really, he should be excluded and completely expelled out of the cosmos. Because there is no point in having if you want to be a butterfly hovering around the, uh, you know, hovering around the uh, cosmos of, of the creator, that is your decision. And you'll hope that in every other life, the more difficult it is through ascension, you'll be able to get one additional orbit closer and closer and closer, starting with a large orbit, going a smaller, smaller until you're near the source. But really, to what means and to what effect? Because really, my theory and my belief system is that really there's no point in having a creator or to live up to the expectations of the creator or live up to the slimy, miserable worm, and I speak worm, known as the Holy Spirit, which usually is an angel, masquerading as such, or a seraphim. And so people like us really want to, really there's no point. Some of you want to have those levels, and if you're the, of those people because you want to get to the source of the Creator, turn this video off right now. It's not for you. Just turn it, turn it off. But if you're interested in how to create your own universe and your own cosmos so that you can expel the forces of the divinity 
and the Divine Consortium, then keep on listening. So, in my communications with angels and spirit guides, using a digital voice recorder, and this is uh, possible, we can take any digital voice recorder, or any recorder for that matter, and you can uh, isolate anything that is uh, when you're inhaling or exhaling, for instance. You can capture that, or any form of audio that is below, hovering below the surface. And then you can reverse the audio, sort of like reverse speech, but not reverse speech, but reverse telepathic thoughts of angels. I know it sounds silly, but I've been at it since 2010. And I know that this is possible and factual. And typically you will have about two or three words every few seconds and more profound ones probably 30 to 45 seconds. And then there's, we call that essentially 1.0. And then there's a version called 2.0, where you can make out two or three, or even as four or five words, and then others that fade out, so you'll hear probably one or two additional ones. So you have complete sentences. And you can reverse this also. And in these ways, I've been able to capture uh, angels and spirit guides in lies and deception by reversing the audio and hearing their true motion of intent. And then the deeper you go and the more you reverse the audio and you slow it down, the more detailed and more profound of a message you can have. There's also a third version, which is very experimental. And that way I was, I was able to record, but it is not so much an actual recording, but a, a method by which you can, um, you can hear your, your subconscious, your actual subconscious mind. And you have to be of a certain level of accomplishment to be able to, to, be able to do this. Uh, you have to be what is called a 27 uh, or up. And uh, most people would probably only be about a 6 at best. So you really, that is not really a form of communication for you. But I just want to point out that you don't need any of these things. You don't need anything like a crystal, for instance. But all you do need is a voice recorder. And throughout all of this, uh, and in my communications, it's been revealed to me that in the future, that the angels were concerned that I might develop cancer. And so what had happened was, I have no problems getting cancer. I have no problems getting diabetes, cancer, or anything. If you look at me and my skin, you know, my hands, I'm 49 years old. Most, well, partly because I'm a Satanist and partly because I've cast out this, uh, this vile spirit, this vile Holy Spirit of Christ, this evil demon of, of God, the evil demon of, of the Creator. And I've cast him out to the, to the side and to the, to the sidelines. But really, I should not be... I should really look my age, and I should look like an old, crusty, old, disheveled, old fart. And I find it very offensive. I find it very offensive that, well, back in 2019, in about June of that year, I had been given, and we have some person here parking here next to us. I'll continue video in a bit. And so, back in 2019, and back in those days, I was essentially in just 1.0 and sometimes even 2.0. And um, so, I had this, um, well, let's put it this way. Back in 2014, I'll give you a little bit of my background. I started off just as a regular secular sap. 
And then uh, right about 2007, late 7 or early 2008, I became a Levian Satanist. All right? A Satanist, a true Satanist. And uh, then in 2014, because I was constantly trying to experiment and look for other other things, and um, I started reading scripture. And there was a book that said, um, essentially showing you how you can, um, you know, it's what is it, the Old Testament that says something, we're all kings according to the order of Melchizedek. And so I myself, I see myself, uh, you know, as a living God, and obviously I have my own godhood. And so I, I thought uh, that scripture would be just really a benign, benign thing. And so in 2010, um, because Bibles do not have disclaimers, and really there should be disclaimers on every form of scripture, or any form of religion for that matter, and just give you real-world examples of one, what one may experience on account of being with, you know, going in any particular way given, re you know, religion. If you want to follow that path, it really should say you're going to get beaten, crucified, admonished, you're not going to get what you want or what your consciousness wants, you're going to lose out, you're going to get uh, the second or the third fruits of the world, you're not going to be a king, you're going to lose all of that, and basically your whole life is going to go to shit. And while I don't want to say that my life did go to shit, because I was able to stifle this this progress and it was really about six or seven months that I just totally started blaspheming the Holy Spirit cursing it out and cussing it out and saying you slimy miserable vile worm of a Holy Spirit you miserable cunt you vile miserable evil spirit I curse you you vile miserable Holy Spirit fuck you and damn you to hell damn you to hell damn you to hell and that was my that was how I was essentially expressing myself during that time so I just want to point out that how some of these things sometimes work. Um, first off, let me begin. I'm not trying to troll this fellow in any way, shape, or form. I used to, many, many years ago, uh, we reconciled our differences, and I uh, he used to block me, and I used to open up another account. And this was back in the day when it was really easy to do that kind of sort, sort of thing. And... Um, Eventually, I had about 90 accounts for which I was able to troll a lot of ministers and, you know, people in general that were in uh, various positions of, um, in uh, all sorts of uh, civil authority and so on and so forth, and really be a menace to society. But at any rate, we did reconcile our differences. Uh, that's the fellow uh, One Pug Life. And that's his channel here. I'm not, I'm not even going to show it to you there. And so basically he picked up a trespasser and confronted on real, real link cameras. And you may just pause the video if you want and me click show more. All right. And so this is just an ordinary comment that I post. But at the same time as I was doing this, I had also made a video very critical of the Creator and the Holy Spirit and just essentially called the Holy Spirit a vile, miserable cunt. And uh, at any rate, this fellow out of the blue, oh, and I also uh, criticized uh, people who uh, smoke a lot of marijuana, okay? And this person is known for smoking a lot of weed. And you can read what he actually put up there. Like, it was completely off topic. All right. And you can pause it for yourself and especially read the bottom line. Right? So it was almost like he was responding to what I was actually creating a video based on my thought form. 
And I had various of these interesting experiences in life. One was where, for instance, uh, whenever I made a satanic ritual, uh, especially like a compassion ritual, you know, like a Levian sat satanic ritual, I would, for instance, have ministers, uh, you know, per cup. And this is how Satan will also teach you and show you that, um, that basically is trying to show you these are my people. You know, that you can go to a church and you think you're dealing with a Christian minister, but he actually is a minister of Satan. And so just uh, things of that nature, they're extremely interesting to observe when you really get in these things. And you're willing to rewrite your own life path to the point where you can uh, completely uh, expunge yourself uh, from all ascension and all purpose of life and uh like me myself i want to live for about four lifetimes of my choosing and then if there was no more higher power or energy left over and i couldn't garnish anything from the other people who do want to ascend uh if that were the case then and only in that scenario or if the world that i know would no longer exist I would most likely like to be defragmented and destroyed and have, you know, all my memories, consciousness, everything completely destroyed and just cease to exist altogether. And so it's essentially a Smith & Wesson retirement plan for the good old soul that uh, really a Smith & Wesson retirement plan without a Smith & Wesson. And so just to show you these uh, very and document these very uh, interesting uh, takes you know we just uh, completely made a response off topic and bear in mind we were not in communication in regard to the response that I received it was almost like he picked up on a response of something that I was thinking like it manifested somehow in him and I know he of course you know he smokes a lot of marijuana and so maybe this has also something and I should also point out I had a, a crystal in the um, in the vicinity a certain type of a crystal but it was no uh, in no way shape or form my intent to actually uh, try to uh, manipulate him or you know get in his mind or anything it was just something that happened by happenstance and so I just want to put put it out there and uh, little by little, I was able to regain my foothold again. And after cursing out this vile, obnoxious Holy Spirit of, of life, because I have a right to have a spirit of death within me. I like death, you understand. And I do not believe that uh, any of us should be saved or anything like that, because I have a right to not be saved. For I have a right not to be saved. As a pagan, I was born right the first time. And I do not need to be saved by any God or Creator or Jesus or any of that nonsense. So I find it as an abomination and an invasion of my own sovereign free will, as well as a violation of my own human rights, to be saved by any God who believes that they are greater than I am. When I am a God, a living God, because I have established my own Godhood and have elevated myself way above the Creator or Christ or any of that nonsense or poppycock or gobbledygook out there. And so I have a right to be damned and damned straight to hell if that's what I want, proverbially speaking, anyway. And really... All that I'm doing is I'm really damning the Creator and all the angels and all the divine forces that actually lead to pathways of such eternal life because as the soul suffers, or really as the person suffers, the soul can ascend. But then you ask yourself to what extent, and then you need to ask yourself to what extent do you want the soul to ascend? Why should the soul ascend? What is the purpose of ascension? So that you can reconstitute with a source of an invading force known as the creator of the universe? 
when you yourself have your own your own cosmos and your own universe does that make sense with any of you does it having your own cosmos you will have wonderful experiences like I say for instance that I want to build a cosmos in the image of myself not in the image of God God is expelled and excluded out of my cosmos he doesn't belong let that rub in I want no part of the source oh yes I can garnish the energy from the source and from those people who seek those pathways that lead to eternal life but I have no interest in that me and my people this world here is all there is there is no need for ascension or a heavenly experience because this is our heaven right here the Garden of Eden and our glorious new world that we have upon us and that we're building and that we have an opportunity to build this wonderful new world order and so really for those people who do not want this new world order and they you know they think it's the mark of the beast and all that you people go to hell get out of our world go to your heaven if you want to go go anywhere you want to go heaven by the way is hell let me explain that to you heaven is hell there's no sex there there's no lust there's no pleasure there's no really all the things that I that I consider the keys to life you know the the old uh, uh, you know uh, man of the world uh, who's kind of I always was joking you know uh, slouched over the um, the bench while the wifey poo goes and shouts for useless crap uh, at the William Sonoma those are my tower type of people you understand and we don't really need the Creator we don't need any Jesus or any of that nonsense and by the way Jesus never did die on a cross he hung on the cross for six hours he learned everything like suspended animation and walking on water he learned all of that in India and he died at the spry age of 112 okay this is not my information you can look up a certain cleric out there a, um, a guru a certain Osho you may want to look him up and he has a lot of background on that and I have a lot more collaborating evidence regarding the Torah codes which is Rabbi Glazerson who has that also has a piece on, on YouTube and uh, so basically there it says that the spirit that was in Jesus was really the spirit that was in a sewer you know a wild man who was kind of uh, you know very very much uh, you know rogue um, kind of a rough gruff type of personality and the story goes I gave his uh, lineage away uh, for bowl of lentil soup well really what he was trying to do he was trying to incarnate into the the seed you know the bloodline of uh, you know Abraham but he was not trying to you know he didn't want to have and partake in any of the wealth yet he was a can-do spirit a, a spirit that can do a lot and people are saying that I believe it was uh, Elijah when he when Elisha was trying to ascend uh, said what well, what can you give me uh, and he said he wanted double measure of what the other schmuck had so time and time again people thought that the spirit that was in um, I believe it was um, Elisha or Elijah I'm sorry I've been a while was actually the spirit that was also in Christ but I know that for fact from what is in the Torah codes the spirit of Christ was actually in the spirit of a sewer this is 100 percent evidence that you can look up I would suggest you go to Rabbi Glazerson's channel and he has a lot of uh, detailed information about these things okay and so we have a, a, a embodiment of a person who really is trying to live a very grandiose life very much above and outside of his means 
yet there's a religion that follows in his wake where everyone is basically rewarded for the fact that you cannot even get you're rewarded for trying and not being able to even live nearly as good as Christ would have perhaps lived and those people on top of it uh, you know a schmuck like him says uh, many of you will do things as great or greater than I I mean it's complete hypocrisy you understand Christianity is a farce and everything you've ever heard about Christianity is a lie it's all made on a lie okay and with uh, Judaism you know I mean you're going to if you study the Talmud uh, you will have a little more background in it I personally like the uh, the Halakhic edition and uh, the, you will you will uh, learn a lot of things there that um, and it will give you a greater scope if you want to be a Christian you really should be a Jew but really I like to basically extricate myself from all of that no need to be a Jew because their lives are completely strapped down and no need to certainly be a Christian you could probably pick up a little bit from Hinduism so you might actually want to be a Baha'i but really for that matter I just choose to identify with Satanism and uh, also paganism so really I am a heathen if you may not have already conjectured and as a heathen I am a a person who has those certain ideals that are in my avatar and honor is uh, something that is incredibly profound and incredibly important aspect but with angels they are a deceiving bunch angels will definitely deceive now some of them may do this based on their infinite love for you they will lie and deceive you but I have them on file recorded which a lot of people may actually be able to hear of them being completely deceptive remember that I have an ability to record angels and spirit guides using a digital voice recorder or any recorder for that matter preferably one with a very sensitive microphone and I have captured angels and um, spirit guide beings in complete blatant bold-faced lies let that sink in your holy angels that you say oh amazing angels and all they're lying miserable lying cunts at least the ones that were in my neck of the woods and so for that matter there are ways that when you use the techniques and as I will later on show you you can do these things and one of the ways and in the early days they thought that I would uh, actually try to uh, show them in a good light but then as it became evident that I actually had more data and more information on this uh, you know and also they also rec started recommending crystals it was where my consciousness and my whole uh, understanding expanded though I've really had that long before already I had uh, crystals and really I just want to point out that it is it is imperative that you know this that what you've been led to believe about religions all the religions of the world they're all a farce all the major religions are a farce we are beings some would say we are beings of light but really I believe we are beings of our own creation that means we can be both beings of either light or dark I choose darkness I don't like the light I mean maybe you get good sleeping with that but I'm, I don't like the light or anything of any pathways that lead to ascension I have no interest in ascension whatsoever and what I want is for myself for my soul to live lives of complete stagnation with no ascension whatsoever okay 
no ascension and no need to aspire to something greater. This here or now, this plateau, this plane, is all that matters. Um, well, let's say this way, when I had uh, the stint with Christianity, there was a particular being, there was a particular seraphim angel that came on scene and um, really was masquerading as the Holy Spirit. I mean, usually it's an angel that gives you the the experiences of a of a Holy Spirit. There's no real Holy Ghost, if you if you must know, but there are um, seraphim angels that will masquerade as the Holy Spirit. At least in my opinion, and this far in my research, perhaps in the future there may be something additional revealed to me on in that regard. But there's no Holy Ghost per se. These are all angels. This is sort of like in the in the old days, you know, we had um, uh, the John D. and Kelly, you know, the two uh, uh, fellows who were doing scrying. Okay, I believe they were somewhere in the in the 14th century. I think it was right around 15 or 1600s. John D. and Kelly. And uh, one was a channeler and the other one was asking all the poignant questions and all that. And uh, it was in this way that the two schmucks were able to actually comprehend a lot of the things of the universe. And I myself have been able to make these discoveries, not with crystals per se, not with any of those, those things, but using a voice recorder, a digital voice recorder with excellent clarity. You can pick, pick up any uh, anything that sounds as static. Um, rain, for raindrops, for instance. If you have a motion of intent, like you're, let's say, going to document something, you're going to write something uh, on a keyboard, those clicks will actually be something that is your intent. And when you're intending something, angels will capture it and they will let it out. And I've been picking up information on everyone. And I can pick up souls and angels in, in humans and animals. Also animals with these techniques. But I just want to point out that this video is not about exclusively about this. Because there's so much more to all these techniques. It is just really want to point out that in 2019... Uh, it's, I had this, um, thing happen to me in life where I had like, sort of like this burn, I would feel something in my abdomen and then I would have this burn usually around my arms. I've actually even had that before, but it was more like it was activated, like it was manipulated for something. And by this burn, I would not be able to have any sleep whatsoever. And it would come at the most inoppor inopportune times. The first year was every other day. So basically for a period of about uh, six months, I didn't sleep for every other night. And remember, this is a person who sleeps for about 10 to 12 hours a day. And that is normal. I consider, I mean, anytime I get about seven and a half hours, I blaspheme God and the Creator. I curse him out, I cuss, I cuss out his miserable, slimy ass and the slimy worm of the Holy Spirit. I'm a bum. You understand? I'm a bum. And a bum gets to sleep for 12 hours a day. Well, if he wants to ascend, he won't sleep that long. But I don't want to ascend. I'm a parasite, a societal parasite. I'm a bum, and I'm living of all your energies. I live off the taxpayer, I love socialism, I love welfare, and I'll do whatever it takes telling a story because one must maintain honor at all cost in order to receive anything and any benefit and garnish anything from you, the, the schmucks that are listening to this, as well as those other people that are listening to this or not listening to this. And uh, garnishing their efforts and their energies and all of that in order to have a means to an end. For I do not care to be on the same journey or the same pathway that they are on or try to ascend or anything. 
Anyway, I had this spirit that would cause a burn in my arms. And for about nine, I think it was about 20 times I had essentially balanitis. And every few days I would have that. And I would heal it with garlic and so on because what was on the so in the soul, it cleanses off by manifests in the, in the flesh and the body. But, but really, the body is to be glorified, not the soul. The soul, or the especially the higher self, that is the lower self. That is the being you condemn. You take the your holy self or your higher self and you condemn it straight to the pit of hell and straight to the pit of darkness. And you don't do it to your own self. I'm the guy who would take my own soul and I'll cast it out like a piece of shit. That's who I am. Do you understand me? That's who I am. And my people, the kind of people who you know, roast children on altars, uh, proverbially speaking, or date dead girls as seen in my previous video, I do a lot of, lot of other things like necromancy and, you know, devil worship and things of that nature. You know, they're probably going to be in the same camp. But uh, anyway, I was receiving these, these techniques that would then result in a series of sweats and I would just feel them in various successions. And this was happening then more gradual and more apart, but it still was happening over a period of five years, even up until eight, it was still there. Even this, even these days I can feel sometimes something very subtle. And I do not want to be, you know, violated in this way because I have never, you know, Christianity and Christ and all of that and, um, you know, the people who are like, uh, you know, the holy and the divine, it's of no interest to me. I wanted the world. That's why I went with, with Christ initially. I wanted to be a god. And I got to be a pauper. Fuck him and fuck Christ and fuck the vileness of the Holy Spirit. You understand? I am a god myself. You're a god. Well, you have the propensity to be a god if you listen to this video. Or if you are really keep on listening past all this. You can build your own cosmos and have your own world. You don't need to rely on a, on a cosmic level of another being of some aggressor that would uh, try to, uh, you know, take away the world so that you can ascend. You fuck your ascension. I take my ascension and I say, fuck my ascension. I don't want any ascension. You understand? I want no ascension. I'm going to have four lifetimes of my choosing. And when the military, the wonderful military industrial complex, which is, I mean, I love people like nature and things like that and i really don't like going much to nature i like the cities i like the ghetto i like violence i like to see you know rape and robberies and murder i like to watch a lot of batch cams and things like that just like it says when the uh, again scripturally where if you end up uh, the eyes like a lamp and if you put, uh, you know, sick things in your mind, you will have a sick mind. Well, I want to have a sick mind. I want to have a sick mind. I want to have a vile, evil, dark mind. And not a mind of light. I curse out your light. And I curse out your heaven and your divinity. All I want is this glorious darkness and to live my life the way I want to and not the way that my soul would have ever wanted which is why I'm working with crystals these days to really override my life path and my soul path as in a way that I would have wanted and not the way that my soul ever wanted in fact I can I resent things that most people like like family and children I consider children or having children a curse from God. 
and I have no interest in doing anything with children. I do believe it is perfectly perm uh, permissible for a 50-year-old man to have salacious uh, escapades with a 12-year-old girl. Or likewise, let's say, a uh, 14-year-old boy, um, let's say, having a 40-year-old woman. And in fact, in the Talmud, I believe, you can take a 12-year-old wife, and this is when the age of consent is normally established. And so, on those grounds, I believe that, um, and this is, by the way, Talmudic law, which predates Christianity. So anyone who has issues with, uh, you know, pedophiles or, or minor attracted people or people of that nature, we're expressing ourselves in accordance to the way that we want to. We don't live by your rules and your ideals and your societal evolution. We live by the way that we want to. Do I make myself clear the way we want to? I don't give a fuck about you or your laws or your regulations or anything. I don't give a shit about your world and what makes your world work. I work according to my own world. I live by my own ideals of honor and grace and, and truth and veritas, as you may say, and absolutely things that, that are true essence and the true essence of man that does not involve any living up to any expectations to any creator or any of that nonsense. If a person is of a consenting age, you should have absolutely no problem with a younger person. And as for angels, I have them, I believe I have them on file, where they had thought that it was normal and possible and perfectly good behavior and I swear by this by myself as a living God and as a man of honor that I have angels on file who said that it was all right with a 13 year old girl and would have recommended for me a 13 year old girl even though I have no interest in young women nor have I ever had interest it is just based on that that principle a matter of principle I think years ago I had some presentations under the old channel Beg Bucks, and I have an Exencopedia Dramatica page to my name when I was defending the this being known as uh, this person um, David Hugh Rock, aka David's Farm, and uh, I was exposing the hypocrisy of his critique. You know the people who were in the cabal critiquing him. And really, at the time, there was no such word that really existed as a map or a minor attracted person. So in the same way as he would have a right to, let's say, have a younger boy or a young girl, then I myself, basically being a granny fucker, I should have every right to, have, let's say, when I was 12 or 13, I should have had a 60-year-old woman or 55 if she was a young chick. And really... I'm also an anti-natalist, so I want to put that out there as well. And I have been a virgin my entire life. I'm 49 years old, and I will not accept just any woman out there. So just let it be known that I am a virgin. Let it be known. Let that sink in. I'm a virgin. I masturbate. I pleasure myself, but I am not, never had penetrated cords with any man. Or any woman I consider homosexuality an abomination in my cosmos and in my world lesbians you don't know much about anything and in the temple of Solomon where he has 700 wives I'm sure all of you um, probably well know that uh, legend has it the 700 wives just uh, commingled among themselves uh, whether it's true or not. But really, I, I think you lesbians, you're missing out on a lot. Uh, you should never, uh, you should, you really do need to have a man in there. Um, but, um, but homosexuals especially, you, you guys are a lost cause. Absolutely. And queers and all of you 
you know, you know, transgender people and all that, you're all a lost cause. You're absolutely a lost cause. Okay. Um, now, let me uh, explain this. I have no issue if your soul could be extracted, like, let's say, in The Simpsons, you know, the episode of the Burns uh, soul extraction machine. And you could take your soul out and place it in another body. But going surgically at anything, I mean, a dentist cannot even stick a crown. I have a crown here in my tooth that fell off and fell off in another couple of weeks. And you want you expect... A, uh, a medical establishment who is unable to even stick a crown there to be able to change your gender and believe that that is somehow all fine, you're messed up. And all of you people who are going to change your, your gender, you're messed up. You understand? You're messed up. And really, you can change your cosmos as much as you want to, but you'll never be in my cosmos. Understood? So in my cosmos, if you're freely passing through, that's fine. But if you have something that, if you're a like-minded person, I guess this is how you could say your circle of people, like you have in, in Czech, by the way, I have a Czech accent. Um, so you, for instance, have a Czech, you know, uh, in Czech we have our own krožek, our own circle, like your own circle of friends and your own network. Uh, if what I say resonates with you, then by all means, feel free. Uh, I'm an extremist liberal. I'm a socialist. I'm a, very much a nationalist. But I'm also highly pro-capitalist. I'm very pro-gun, even though I cannot own a firearm being legally living in my van or my trailer, not in America anyway. And, uh, and certainly not in this state anyway. I am pro-abortion pro-abortion, not, not pro-choice, pro-abortion, 100% pro-abortion. I'm anti-vax. I don't believe you should be vaccinated on anything, especially something that was just rushed into production. It's about Satanism. I see a lot of you Satanists. You're extremely grotesque. You with your purple hair, you know, and your fuchsia hair and your, uh, you know, your, your uh, what do you call it, your black lipstick. You know, especially you women, you're, you're disgusting with all your piercings and all of that and all that nonsense, you know, and you look like a swine with that, with that, uh, uh, what do you call it, the ring through your nose. You are extremely unattractive. You ever want to see a real Luciferian woman sort of like in the movie, The Ninth Gate, you know, that Ninth Gate angel, okay, the demoness? You want to see a really salacious lady? Just look to the, you know, to the French, you know, in a French villa, for instance. You know, there's going to be a lady who's going to have, you know, pantyhose and no tattoos and is just elegant and graceful and all of that. If you wanted to check their background, you most likely find that they are Luciferians. And some of them are actually Satanists. None of you Satanists ever dress up in a suit. You, the guys and the men, you'll wear your your uh, your garb, your black. I like white. I will wear white as a Satanist. I'll wear gray. Today I have a gray shirt, okay? I'm actually in the middle of a project, so I'm a little bit, uh, you know, a little, uh, I'm a little bit disheveled today. But really, um... You just you you you're really an abomination, and you're you're you sound hypocritical when you speak, and the the things that you that you seem seem to rehash, saying what everybody else is doing. You're doing exactly what everybody else is doing. You're keeping up with the Joneses. You're not original, and really you have nothing of value to offer to most of society or to anyone in general. Even the people who are in the know would probably laugh at you. You understand? So, really, and you don't watch your weight. I'm all right with a few love handles, and I've always liked, you know, curvier women more than, um, you know, those emaciated uh, models and all that. This period, by the way, I want to speak about that has um, tried to prevent me uh, from getting cancer at a later date. 
which was really a violation of my own cosmos because I had a right to develop cancer and, um, and diabetes and every form of disease that is out there. And uh, I, was, uh, I was healed, but I never wanted to be healed. And I certainly wouldn't want to be healed of my own suffering because I could have been healed by simply taking other people's suffering, you know, and use it for my own merits. And more on that later in future videos, uh, the people who are, you know, the people who have already turned off this video, chances are that people like us are using your energies. And there's a lot more of this that meets the eye, and I won't get, cover all that in this video. I just don't have time for that. But really, I just find it very much uh, disheartening that a lot of you people who who try to follow certain uh, preconceived pathways, you know, you'll say you're a Satanist, you're going to dress exactly like every Satanist out there, okay? You're going to do everything that everyone believes, and, uh, and you're going to run as the beasts of the field, rejoicing the fleshy life. Well, I got news for you. And yes, I picked this up through my techniques, through the um, recording techniques. So let's see what is running as the beasts of the wild, rejoicing the fleshy life, uh, as Satanists like to say. That is actually a very primordial and primal force. So you actually, what if I gave you a little bit of insight that most Satanists, according to Levian Satanism, are actually spiritual people. It's a spiritual path for those people who were unreachable by other forms of religion. And really, my sort of Satanism is, it's similar in some ways, but it's vastly different in others. Um, to Anton LaVey, I still will give you a credit that at least you were not a faggot. So that's a plus. But a lot of uh, Satanists are, in my opinion, they're all, they're gay. And uh, I have no problems with you gay people around, but I have real problems when you try to put your spiel and you try to put it on, on the rest of us and you try to force feed it as normal. Man is not supposed to go into man. You understand? And one thing that really bothered me was whenever I did a satanic ritual in the past, before I really got to know things, and especially with the um, recordings, the subvocal recordings and the angelic communications and so on, I was uh, I would do a ritual, and I would immediately get interest from from gays, and I'm a straight person. I have not gone out with any woman in my life, mainly on grounds that I did not have the resources because most people subconsciously have their levels by which they want to be on a certain level. And they may say, let's say that they want to be with someone based on a, um, so as I was stating earlier, was that certain um the reasons why i have been so i had a person come around here and very loud exhaust because some people need to express themselves by a loud exhaust rather than have a very silent running vehicle okay and so i had to interrupt this video i apologize for that but at any rate the reason i have been single uh my whole life is because i was you know, people very often they have, um, how should you say this? Uh, they have a certain uh, subconsciously they are able to pick up on something. And they might be able to say, okay, I want, for instance, a person who is, let's say, comfortable and has a comfortable lifestyle. Well, to have a comfortable lifestyle in this part of the Cape Cod area where my mother is, you need $107,000 a year, which is about 10 times the income I have. And I myself will never date a woman who has less, uh, you know, who makes, who's not as financially well endowed as living exclusively from socialism. 
I find it hugely turn a huge turn off. And this was also presented that I could have a a wife that would have the as the angels have told me uh, that would have eight hundred and sixty thousand dollars in the bank. And I said no. If you hold a job, you pay income taxes. I don't care how much you make. You're repulsive, and I'll never date you. Uh, she did want to have children. This was another reason I had an option for two soulmates. And one soulmate was a person who wanted to have children. And I said, no. And this person also had $860,000 in the bank. And I said, no. I mean, for me, I want a woman who's living and has all the moderations of the world living on about $16,000 a year. And such people I cannot find in this area. They do not exist. So I'm building my van and trailer so I can make and have a, a major exodus and go to the ghetto to find myself a wife. Actually, legend has it that she probably is somewhere around the Vermont or New, uh, New Jersey area. Uh, and even alongside uh, eastern, very far east in New York. And uh, so that's uh, the reason I've been single mo my whole life. My mother's getting elderly and she's in the rented cottage. So after working at Christmas tree shop, uh, she will have to go to subsidized housing for the elderly. Or she's going to have to get some apartment. And me, myself, I'm going to be living my car and my trailer. Not this one, not this $550 charm of a of a Dodge uh, 2002 Dodge Caravan, but probably something like a fourth gen uh, town and country. More on that later, as I know these inside and out. And I will be living my car, expressing myself in accordance to my own will, and pick up the woman that is the love of a life that I've uh, promised a thousand years to actually be with over several lifetimes even though once the military industrial complex that I hold so dear would no longer be really it is my hope that my own soul and my own consciousness and all my memories and everything that is to me and to my essence after about four lifetimes or about 350 to 400 years gets completely defragmented and destroyed I want to cease to exist in about 400 years. In the meantime, uh, you schmucks listening to these videos and these forms of expressions uh, will be stuck with me and will have to endure it. If by chance in 400 years, since I do not want any alternate dimensions, I would consider going back in time and then essentially have a looped life in that sense but never anything as uh, crossing over to some other part because that is not my life and not my world uh, I should live for about 350 years and then be destroyed and then you can cast my soul and my consciousness and everything straight to the pit of hell or you can just let it orbit some crystal out there and uh, it'll be duly noted that uh, that would also be welcome. So I'm probably one of the most relatively most uh, happiest uh, stand up uh, virgins you'll ever meet. And that's really because, as I said, I do to, to borrow a term from the late Bill Hewitt, you know, PowerStrokeHelp.com, uh, who passed away at 57, might I might add. Uh, he was, uh, he said something that, you know, uh, people were never a strong point in his life. Machines were, but not people. And I'm, I'm in the same boat. Uh, I don't enjoy the human uh, company of humans. I do not enjoy the company of humans overall. Um, maybe it is based on the area. I do not like the way that most of humanity is compartmentalized. So you have people who are, let's say, they're going to be they're going to vote uh, for Trump and they're going to want to live a certain way exactly as other people who vote for Trump will be. 
and and they will not they'll be against uh, abortion and they'll be uh, you know with a you know uh, religious uh, right and they want freedom but they want oppression so that they cannot just and just have a soul tie with anybody they want because all any form is a soul tie you're creating a tie you're tying yourself to another be person or being and so really uh and this is why all you young bucks listening to this and all you, all you damsels of delight you should absolutely uh, think about uh, who you're going to tie with and me myself I'm not just going to stick my dick in some you know just a vagina that is not going to happen ever it's gonna have to be some very special vagina but not one that is of a of a you know of a particular compartmentalized type person okay it was also revealed to me that what I'm looking for in general there's uh, several hundred such women all over the uh, Northeast United States and so uh, but sadly none of them here on the Cape Cod area which is okay because in two years I'll be priced out of this market entirely and I'll have to be in my van my trailer until I until I'm able to procure uh, maybe a one dollar house uh, in Detroit uh, or three or four hundred dollar house somewhere or maybe some some place like in Flint you could get a really nice bungalow for like fifteen hundred dollars uh, yes free and clear and the only catch was that uh, they had a bad water supply and so I don't really care for that because for every inch of rain that falls uh, per square foot of your roof um, 0.6 gallons you get 0.6 gallons of water for every inch of rain that falls on your roof and you just make yourself a rainwater collection system and if you get uh, a certain area in Detroit up there in Flint area we'll get about 35 inches of rain a thousand square foot house 35 inches of rain that's about 35 by 600 so you're looking somewhere around what is it 21,000 gallons of water per year just from what falls from, from the sky all geoengineered might I add or most of it anyway as those people uh, as the plane makers actually know so anyway um, I'm just uh, putting this out there and uh, kind of giving you an insight in some of my politics and as I'm going to be growing and enhancing my brand, I'm also experimenting with what the um, what uh, YouTube will allow and will not allow because I'm interested in putting in quite a bit of my own money or rather other people's money that may or may not exist. And over in the future, well, let's not talk about the future. In the near future, there will be opportunities for greater economic expansion by those people who are um, well let's say let's say in 50 years everything that the middle class has everyone in the underclass is gonna have and there'll be a lot of societal changes and during that time leading up to it so really I just want to point this out there and um, if there's anything that um, I might really want to add to this is that I'm just not I'm a very unique person the angels have told me and um, so anyway I'm just uh, passing this part along and want to say that um, you really do need to change in your life path and your soul path and so my hope with these techniques that I'll show is how you can prevent yourself from being able to live out your soul path and your life path that you can place your soul in check so that your soul is now checkmated and crucified and you know how the Christians say the, that they try to crucify the flesh and glorify the soul I believe your soul and my soul should be proverbially crucified or physically crucified at least your soul or maybe my soul especially crucified and the flesh glorified for the flesh is everlasting 
in the pages of time it is everlasting, and the soul is not everlasting. The soul is basically just a wisp of air that has very little meaning or anything. And anyone who tries to glorify the soul is a pathetic cunt and a, and a loser and a complete bottom-feeding scumbag. Because those people, they will try to uh, glorify their soul at the expense of your spirit. And they're going to drag your spirit into an involuntary servitude in order to serve it to, in order to serve this higher self, this higher purpose of this higher self, who is this higher self version of your soul, so that you can live out the life as it wanted, so that it can throw you under the proverbial bus, so that you get to have all the sufferings and anguish and all of it for its ability to ascend. And with my techniques, I show you how to stifle that ability for them so that they never get what they wanted or what they needed. If it is something that you wanted and it happens to overlap that which your higher self or your soul wanted, with my techniques and my encouragement is for you to disallow and disavow and disavow your soul and your higher self from being able to receive credit or any form of ethereal credit on behalf of making this change and issuing this change. So that really there is no ascension and your soul is hereby condemned so that you will never reach oneness with the Creator and never have to go that hellhole, that total shit show known as heaven, which really is... Uh, you know, I mean, it's the lowest, dirtiest, filthiest gutter there is, is to going for a soul to go to heaven and drag a spirit along is a total bottom feeding, low life gutter. And really, I would never want to go to heaven because that heaven is not fit for man or beast. And remember this, folks, heaven is a staging area, not a final destination. Nor should it ever be a final destination. Because really life here on earth, and this is why when we make a satanic funerary call, we are binding ourselves to the earth, because we want to say that we have the primordial force of the universe, and I can already feel an angel blushing within me, something you will pick up on as you get to work with these techniques, you'll be more in, in uh, contact with angelic forces, and you'll even feel their emotional states as well. Uh, this is a byproduct of doing this actively as I have and for, for many years. But really, uh, there's a lot more to the whole story about, you know, uh, as I said earlier, you know, a lot of the Satanists uh, they are actually really spiritual. There are options for ascending spiritually in ways where they would otherwise be unreachable by other techniques uh, and other religious paths. So they're given this opportunity that they can be this particular way. And uh, the angels, they don't really care. The, really, the angels and the spirit guides, they couldn't care less whether you're you know, a Christian or a Satanist. As long as you have some working, as long as you have some working or some seeking for some uh, consciousness expansion, some knowledge, working in some form of religion or belief system, they're okay with it. That's another secret of the universe. Never is that any. That's another secret of the universe. They don't seem to care whether you have uh, one pathway or another pathway. As long as it's a pathway by which you can reach some level of attempting to have some level of enlightenment. Although they don't really want you all that enlightened. 
Um, I'm one of the few people that actually, if you look in some of my um, archives, I have absolutely uh, yelled at angels in a very evil and vile and menacing way. And I've badgered them a lot. And I intend on doing that so long as they tend to be very angely.